Hi, I'm Kat and I play Red. I own a lot of games. Some would say too many, others would say not enough. But consequently, I'm trying not to buy new games at the moment and enjoy the stuff we have. However, at BGGCon in the past, I played a game, immediately put it on my wish list and bought it the day I got back. That game was Fife, um, designed by Kosh, produced by Pegasus Spiel. I loved it, so I came home, bought it. Let's have a look at it. In Fife, players decide for themselves how much they want to score in each position on their boards. Place pieces as effectively as possible to score the most points while your opponents try to do the same. Each player starts with their empty player board and matching set of seven Lucky Charm tokens and 15 scoring surfboards. Everyone draws two tokens at random from the bag and places them on the bottom of their board in the dishes here. So pop those there. Put the first scoring tokens, the joker tiles, the bonus points, and your bag of tokens in the middle of the board so everyone can reach the bag. The aim of the game is to fill your player board with tokens and scoring boards to maximize your scoring. A game lasts for 25 rounds, one for each space on your board. Each token has three essential elements, the color, the number, and the symbol. So in this case, we have a green king with a one and a yellow flower with a one. In your turn, you will draw a token, place it into your supply. Obviously, we're not doing that in the first round. You're going to resolve any Lucky Charm tokens that were pulled, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's only five of them in there. Each player then places one of their two tokens anywhere onto their player board. After this, you must place a scoring board that is pointing towards the newly placed token. Don't forget your two diagonals here. So let's have a look at what I've got and where I might want to place. So I think I'm going to go for something fairly easy to begin with. I'm going to pop that there and pop that scoring token there. If you complete a scoring board when you place a token, you're going to flip that over to let everyone know you've scored it. If you're the first person in the game to score that specific requirement, you're going to take the first player one here and pop that there for an additional three points at the end of the game. If multiple players complete the same objective in the same turn, no one gets the first player extra points. So we're going to flip that back over for now. And we're going to have a look at the scoring tokens and see what they mean. So the board that I initially placed is one, two, three, four, five, which is telling me I need to tokens that have the numbers one, two, three, four, five in that row. Nothing else matters. The color doesn't matter. The symbol doesn't matter. In this case, we're purely looking at the numbers. So here in reverse order, we have five, four, three, two, one. Now, if you remember, I said each token has three things. It has a color, a symbol and a number and that's what these symbols mean so in this case you need essentially a full house of symbols so a full house is two the same and three 
the same but different. So here we have that for symbols, for colours and for numbers. We'll have a look at these two in a minute. So here we need no symbols the same. All symbols the same. No numbers the same. All numbers the same. And same with colours. No colours the same and all colours the same. Here we have one that is for that specific set of symbols but they must be in that order and same with the colours so although you've got five different colours here for this tile they need to be in a specific order the last two we've got here is just anything just fill your row or column Last but not least, we have the big one here. So that is nothing can be the same. No numbers, no colours, no symbols the same. So this is quite a tough one to get. So that would be the first turn. What we'd now do is, starting with A player, we'd all take A token and pass the bag round. Once everyone has taken a token, we're going to place and place the scoring board. So now one, two, three, four, five, kind of makes sense to put that there. So let's have a look at what we might want to put on this row at the moment. I don't know what's coming out. Um, let's go for different numbers. So let's pop that there. And um, once everyone has placed, you draw another token. So let's have a look and find one of these elusive seashell tokens so that we can have a look at those. If at any point a player draws a lucky charm symbol, play kind of stops for the time being. If I'd if I draw that, I don't place it there, it gets discarded and I draw up. Now, these are going to allow you to use your lucky shell tokens. So let's have a look at these. Now, all of these have got different abilities. So this shell here allows you to put both your tokens back in the bag and draw new ones. And number two here lets you move a piece to another empty space on your board. Number three allows you to swap one of the pieces here. So I could do something like that if I wanted to. You just swap them over. Here, you can fulfill a scoring board with only four of the five conditions, but the row or column must still be complete. And uh, number five, you can place in this turn one of your tiles upside down and put one of these joker tiles on top of it. It now counts for any colour, any number, any symbol on the row, the column and the diagonals. So the jokers can be really handy, especially a bit later on in the game. You can also here turn just one of your tiles over and turn it into a joker and lastly here um, if you've already scored one of these you can put it to one side you're still going to score it at the end of the game and place a new scoring tile on it so these really change things up and you'll notice throughout the game you're going to mess things up. You're never going to get everything how you want it on this board. So these lucky charms can really save your skin. So that's those. Once these are drawn, they go out of the game. Um, and there are only five in the bag. So you do have seven of these tiles, but you're only going to play five at maximum. Now, a similar thing with the surfboards. Oops. You'll notice there is 5, 10, 
12 spaces, but you have 15 of these. So you will have to make decisions about what you want to use and what you don't want to use. So let's go back to my turn. Um, I'm gonna pop that through there, which means I need to place something here. Oh, I don't know. Actually, I do know I am gonna go five, four, three, two, one. And there we go, oof. Play will continue in this way until everyone has a full board of 25 pieces. You're gonna be placing simultaneously so everyone will finish the game at the same time. Now, I'm tempted I'm gonna take that one, pop it there, and I've got the two ones, so I'm gonna look at Maybe let's go with numbers the same. Ooh. Actually, no, I am gonna put it there for now. So that is saying all of this row needs to be ones, which is looking good because I've got that. Oh. So again, I'm quite lucky. I've got two ones I can place. Um, let's have a look in one of these. I'm gonna pop that there. And I'm going to go a different colours here. Draw another token. Oof, turtles. So here we go. This, all the numbers must be different, and here all the colours must be different. So I'm going to pop that there because it fulfills both of those conditions. But I've actually got scoring boards in the row and the column. It doesn't hit either of the diagonals. So on this occasion, I'm not actually going to place a scoring board, which doesn't happen that often. So where are we at? For, um, I'm going to pop that there. That fulfills my 5-4. No colours the same. Wow. Doesn't normally work like this. And... So these, neither of these are good on this column because I want different colours. The two could go here or here, in fact. Let's go here and try and fill this row. Now I put that there, I need to put a scoring tile. I'm a bit nervous about putting down turtles because I've got a lot in play already. Let's go with Full House of Colours. Oh. Right, so again, um, no numbers the same. So I could go there with that. Let's do that. And I need to put a scoreboard for that column. Let's go with different symbols yeah let's do different symbols and restock so you can see how quickly aha the board is filling up so now I'm going to place my four pineapple there I need to put something on here um, I'm actually going to go with this one because I need a turtle a leaf and a pineapple and that's there but I have now completed this column. So I'm gonna flip that over so the full scoring is visible. And because I'm the first person to do it, I take the extra three points. So now we've placed 23 tiles, we've had 23 rounds. I have two tokens left on the board. Now both of these I'm gonna to have to place so let's have a look at what I've got. I failed a lot of these. That's the way it goes. And I don't think it really matters, but I'm gonna put that there. So I don't draw at the end of this round. And then I'm gonna pop that in as my last token. So at the end of the game, you're going to score points 
for any of these that have flipped over that you've completed. So this is usually the point I like to double check as well. So not that one, that was the wrong one. So I would get seven points plus 15, so 22. This one I didn't score. This one I didn't score. I'd get an extra 10 for this because all the numbers are the same. I didn't score this one or this one. I scored this one, so 7 there, 15 there. You're then going to add up the points on any of your unused lucky charms. So there's quite a lot of points here. So these are worth hanging on to if you don't need to use them. So that's 10, 20, 2 points there. Add it to my score here. And the player with the most points is the winner. One thing I didn't mention, because I always like to forget something, is if I'd managed to place this in one term and fulfill the requirements on this scoring token and this scoring token in the same round, I would gain one of these little tokens, which are worth an extra five points. So if you just complete one scoring requirement, you get nothing. If you manage two from the same placement, you get one. If you manage three, you get one. And if you manage to get four, which I think you can only do with this middle one, you'd get three of them. So there are these extra bonus points up for grabs. Now, this is one of those really deceptive little games. Um, in some ways, it reminds me of Earth, it reminds me of Applejack. It is a puzzle. You get halfway through the game and go, oh, I've messed this one up, I've messed that one up. And you will get frustrated. Halfway into my first game, I declared that it was hurting my head and I needed to buy it. Um, it's very rules simple. But actually getting the requirements you need to match everything up has you sat really thinking. And I love that in a game. I really enjoy a game that is rule simple, but still challenging. Um, the other thing you need to do is to keep an eye on your opponent's board. There is one of each combination of token. So there is one purple pineapple. So if you're waiting for a specific tile, you need to keep an eye on what your opponents have got because if they've got a token you need, it's not gonna come out. And the only way you're potentially gonna complete something is by using one of your lucky charms, which may or may not come out because there's only five in the bag. There is exactly enough tokens for a five player game. So the fewer players you're playing with, the less chance there is in some ways of what you want to come out. Um, not only keep an eye on what your opponents have got token wise, but also watch for what they're likely to score. There's no point two of you trying to be the first person to score the same thing. It's clever. It's deceptively fiendish little game. I have no idea why I haven't heard about it, which is partly why I wanted to do this video and talk about it. So I'm going to say thank you, Caleb, for introducing me to this. Um, your name probably has a lot of blue language while we're playing it, um, because it does make your head hurt. That's five. Um, it's available now, US and UK. Um, Pegasus Spiel, we do like their games as well, so I have no idea why this went over my head. Too many games, not enough time. Check it out now, it's quite cheap as well, I think we paid about £30 um, in the UK for this. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, click like, subscribe, all that stuff, you know what you're doing. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, if you're going to game night, 
find the game, send them the video so they can learn it before you turn up. See you next week. Bye.